Hey, this is Linda. I'm reviewing a new case, or something new to my shop. It's a Gewa. Uh, they call it a Rolly case. They have other models which I can also get. Uh, this is made in Germany, and um, it's similar to the BAM New Tech. We're going to turn this case around. I, um, I have this pastel yellow. Apparently they're not going to carry pastels or metallics anymore, so this will be the only pastel I will have, and then I can only I'll just show the regular colors that they have, like blue and red and black. Uh, this one has a satin finish, semi-gloss satin finish. It has this edging around it, gives it some stiffness. It has this black um, kind of vinyl or leather cushioned bridge area. I believe it's fiberglass, and um, I wanted to show you the flex on the back. We have a flat back here, and there's a considerable amount of flex, so it's going to be important to look at how much space we have between the back of the cello and the inside of the case back here, because it's moving, oh, I'd say almost a quarter of an inch, so it's a considerable amount of flex. Let's do a, uh, bal a weight, actually, right now. Zero it out. Okay, we have almost 12 pounds, so it's 11.9 pounds with wheels. Pretty typical. It's a durable case, it should protect your cello well, as long as we have that space between the cello and the back of the case. Now open it up. We have only four latches. For those of you who don't like a lot of latches, that's a nice feature. The interior is pretty nice. There's no smell. I noticed when I open it up, it's like some of the uh, other uh, fiberglass cases. You can smell adhesives or some of the resins. It seems like a roomy case. I've actually fit some of the smaller Montagnonas in here. This, this cello is fairly tall, so we'll see how this one fits. This one's pretty, it's pretty snug top to bottom in here. And it might be me. So this is a good case for probably cellos that are have an under 30 inch body. This one's probably about 30 inch body, so it's it's it fits, but it's snug. It's a Strad model, but it's a tall, tall cello. Now you want to come back here and feel if we have airspace back here. And it feels like I do quite a bit, probably three quarters of an inch behind the back of the cello. So you're, you're not going to transfer a blow to the back of the instrument, which is important. There's actually a little bit of padding above the scroll. I like that. There's uh, a nice shaped cushion around the neck heel. There's clearance in all the corners. This strap isn't Velcro, which is kind of cool. It's um, kind of like a fanny pack buckle, and then it ratchets, kind of like a zip tie, and it has cushion around it. So nice finish inside. I really like the finish inside of this case. There's no scroll loop, and there's no neck block. And it's snug for this for this cello. But I I'd still feel comfortable putting this cello in that case. It's not gonna move around. We're gonna look at the interior. Feels pretty stable. Look at the interior some more. There's a block here, I think it just stiffens the neck area of the case but the cello doesn't actually rest on it. There's a good half inch or more of padding all the way around the rib area. Like I said, it had this shaped neck block. It's a little more 
densely foamed up here and squishier down here. And then you down at the bottom, you have a squishy foam to support the cello away from the back. And nice uh, surface for the cello to sit on. It supports the, the end pin block area of the cello, the structural portion of the cello. So it's really suspended by the structural blocks of the cello, which is good. And it has this, uh, it's almost like a felt. It's not velour, it's like a felt, feels like felt or something inside here. And there's padding behind the scroll as well. Turn it around this way for the lid. We have a nice roomy pocket. You can pull out stuff in there. It looks like you carry uh, strings easy because it's wide, it'll hold a set of strings, rock stuff, rosin, and such. It's a nice size. These uh, are foam pockets for the bow. I don't know what gravel bow and see what those look like. The tip fits in there pretty good. I tend to like to put my frog down. Let's see if that works. That seems to work fine. I put the frog down because if it does break away out of this top sleeve, then it doesn't scratch your toe. It has a snap and not Velcro. And it, it limits itself by hitting the case, so I don't think both can bounce out of there. So that's kind of nice. So I like that. That's a good, good design. Um, I don't know what else I could say. You have this little limit strap. Sometimes these little elastic things break and then, then they get in the way when you shut the case. So you might just get rid of it because you also have a handle here doing the same thing. Shuts real easy. Typical draw latches. You can put a lock on this draw latch. A paddle lock. Keep the kids out. Again, you have the four draw latches. You have um, the rolled webbing handle with a rubber grip. It looks like a pretty solid contact. This looks like a plastic screwed on handle. Um, these, these two parts here. There's also a similar handle for the shoulder handle for picking up vertically. You have a fold-out handle for wheeling the case. Very typical. And it looks like all these parts, except for this one, are bolted on. This one's actually riveted on. These are all... They look like they're screwed. Well, that might be a rivet. I know that they sell all these parts in the catalog, but it looks like they're all riveted on. And rubber stopped, two narrow hinges, but the metal's pretty thick, so it looks pretty stout. You have like a roller blade wheels, and then it looks like those are also rivets. If I look closely, I'll see if I can see a. Yep, those are rivets. So you, you would need a rivet gun and a drill to take them off and put them back on. You have these uh, feet with little rubber surfaces, so when you lay it on the back, it's not going to scratch the case. And now I'm going to talk about the straps. You have the D-rings seem pretty stout and well attached. And the straps remind me a lot of BAMS style straps. Maybe the, it's got neoprene, it's not super cushioned, but it doesn't look like it would be slippery. You have uh, kind of like a carabiner hook, aluminum. It has this keeper collar that threads up just like BAM. These things vibrate loose, and I don't trust them without using um, a product called Loctite. I don't know if you guys know about that, but I'm going to just talk about it a little bit. Because when I put the straps on a BAM case or anything, and it re requires this little threaded knurled nut to keep the hook from opening up accidentally, I always put a drop of the Loctite on the threads as a thread lock, work it back and forth when I put it on my case. 
This isn't glue. You got to make sure that you get the stuff that says it's repositionable or removable, because they do have a glue. A glue. It's called an adhesive. And you don't want to glue it in permanently. You want to be able to open it if you want it open. But but it keeps it from vibrating loose and then having your tele fall off your back. So that's my recommendations, and um, that's sort of my review on this, <laughs> this rolly case. It's kind of pricey for the weight, but it's probably good. Good protection and, and good if you do some heavy traveling. Hope that helps.